the highest of heights to the depths of the sea. Creation revealing your majesty. From the colors of fall to the fragrance of spring. Every creature unique in the song that it sings All exclaiming Indescribable, uncontainable You place the stars in the sky and you know them by name You are amazing God All powerful Untamable, all struck, we fall to our knees as we humbly proclaim. You are amazing, God. Who has told every life in fold where it should go? A seen heavenly storehouse laden with soul. Who imagines the sun who gives source to its light Yet conceals it to bring us the coolness of night None can fathom this animal, uncontainable You place the stars in the sky and you know them by name You are amazing God Incomparable, incomparable, unchangeable. You see the depths of my heart and you love me the same. You are amazing, God. Indescribable, indescribable, uncontainable. You place the stars in the sky and you know them by name. You are amazing, God. All powerful, all powerful, untamable. All struck, we fall to our knees as we humbly proclaim. You are amazing, God. You are amazing, God. You are amazing God. In my wrestling and in my doubts in my failures you won't walk out Your great love will lead me through You are the peace in my troubles You are the peace in my troubles In the silence In the silence you won't let go In the questions your truth will hold Love will lead me through. You are the peace in my troubles. Oh, you are the peace in my troubles. My lighthouse, my lighthouse, shining in the darkness. I will follow you. Oh, my lighthouse, my lighthouse. I will trust the promise. You will carry me safe to shore, safe to shore, safe to shore, safe to shore. I won't fear, I won't fear what tomorrow brings with each morning. My troubles see what oh, you are peace in my troubles see my light 
lighthouse, my lighthouse, shining in the darkness. I will follow you, oh, my lighthouse, my lighthouse. I will trust the promise, you will carry me safe to shore. Before us, you're the brightest. You will lead us to the shore. Fire before us, you're the brightest. You will lead us to the storm. Fire before us, you're the brightest. You will lead us to the storm. Fire before us, you're the brightest. You will lead us through the storm. You will lead us through the storm. My lighthouse, my lighthouse, shining in the darkness. I will follow you, oh, my lighthouse, my lighthouse. I will trust the promise. You will carry me safe to shore. Please be seated. One, two, is that? Yep, that's good. We are about to take a baptism for a young lad in our church family which I find very exciting. Um, Ethan and his brother Harrison both uh, seem to have lots of love and energy and creativity that so far that I've encountered. And I think they're both going to go on to lead exciting lives which, which benefit people and bless people. And so it's a real exciting moment now to bring Ethan for his christening and for parents and godparents to make promises on his behalf as we look to his future. So parents, parents and godparents, and Ethan, and does Harrison want to come up too? I don't know if he wants to come on up. I'm just going to make you a little bit more space. This, uh, this lectern's here. Um, godparents, come on up too. And uh, if you'd like to kind of gather in this way, that's great. Take that, take that lid off there. And we're going we're gonna to say some words together. I'm going to say some bits, and you're going to say some bits. And the words are going to appear on the screen, so we should all be able to see them. And there's, there's a handy one back there, you see, we can look at. I say this bit. Jesus said, let the children come to me. Do not stop them. We thank God for Ethan. Jesus loves him and welcomes him into his church. So I ask you all, and this is for everybody, will you support him as he walks his journey of faith? Yeah. You're going to get that answer, ask that again. I think the next one can be with a bit more gusto. <laughs> will you help him to live and grow within God's family? Yeah. Yes. God knows each of us by name, and we are his. Parents and godparents, you speak for Ethan today as we trust God for his growth in faith. So I ask, will you promise to care for him, pray for him, and help him to follow the way of Jesus? We will. We all wander far from God and lose our way. Jesus comes to find us and welcomes us home, and in baptism we respond to his call. Therefore, parents and godparents and anybody else who wants to join in, do you turn away from sin? I do. Do you reject evil? I do. Do you turn to Christ as Saviour? I do. Do you trust in him as Lord? I do. Praise God.
who made heaven and earth, who keeps his promise forever. Let us give thanks to the Lord our God. It is right to give thanks and praise. We praise you, loving Father, for the gift of your Son, Jesus. On him you poured your spirit at his baptism in the River Jordan. He sent his followers to baptize all who turn to him. And so, Father, we ask you to bless this water, that those who are baptized in it may be cleansed in the water of life, filled with your spirit, and know themselves loved as your children, safe in Christ forever. Amen. Let us affirm our common faith in Jesus Christ. Do you believe and trust in God the Father, source of all being and life, the one for whom we exist? I believe and trust in him. Do you believe and trust in God the Son, who took our human nature, died for us, and rose again? I believe and trust in him. Do you believe and trust in God the Holy Spirit, who gives life to the people of God, and makes Christ known in the world. I believe and trust in him. This is the faith of the church. This is our faith. We believe and trust in one Father, Son, and Holy Spirit. Ethan, I'm gonna just mark your forehead with the sign of the cross. Receive the sign of the cross. Fight faithfully as a disciple of Christ. And um, I'm going to read a short passage from the Bible, which Jesus addresses not to his close followers, or he's not talking about himself or anything like that. He's talking to the crowd of people who are gathered around him to listen. Everybody. So believers, People who are strolling past, bystanders, pol policemen, I have no idea, anybody who was hanging around, Jesus was addressing this to everybody. You are the light of the world, like a city on a hilltop that cannot be hidden. No one lights a lamp and then puts it under a basket. Instead, a lamp is placed on a stand where it gives light to everyone in the house. In the same way, let your good deeds shine out for all to see so that everyone will praise your heavenly father and that's that's our prayer really for ethan that actually he'll be a a light full of good deeds full of love that shines is a blessing to this family is a blessing to friends is a blessing to the community in the world yeah that is right so, Ethan, we're going we're gonna to baptise you, and I think your dad's going to come and hold you over here. And if you just kind of like maybe just bring him down a little, I see you fine up there. Yeah, Ethan. Oh, uh, sorry. What name have you chosen for this child? Ethan Eric Christopher. Ethan Eric Christopher. Ethan Eric Christopher. I baptise you in the name of the Father, and the Son, and the Holy Spirit. Amen. Amen. There's a bit of a trying that. We've got the next part on the screen. We could say this part together. May God, who has received you by baptism into his church, pour upon you the riches of his grace, that within the company of Christ's pilgrim people, you may daily be renewed by his anointing spirit and come to the inheritance of the saints in glory. Amen. There is one Lord, one faith, one baptism, and by one spirit we are all baptized into one body. We welcome you into the fellowship of faith. We are children of the same heavenly Father. We welcome you. And we do. Congratulations, Ethan. <laughs> Carol, Carol, could you pop, there's a candle in a box, just on the table, just inside that door there. I knew there was something I'd left out. I'm going to say a prayer 
I'm going to say a prayer for you. Actually, tell you what, it's going to be on the screen. We can all say this one. Let's put this next one up. Anybody who wants to can say this. And it's a prayer, it's a prayer for Ethan, and it's a prayer for the family, and it's a prayer for friends. Faithful and loving God, bless those who care for Ethan and grant them your gifts of love, wisdom, and faith. Pour upon them your healing and reconciling love and protect their home from all evil. Fill them with the light of your presence and establish them in the joy of your kingdom. Through Jesus Christ, our Lord. Amen. Amen. Um, light gets mentioned a lot in the baptism service. And light is a symbol. Light is a, a symbol of the way that God opens our eyes so that we can see. He, he shines as a guiding light. He shines as an inspiration. And we, we need light for life on the earth. Light comes and it gives life to plants. And then we eat the plants, or animals eat the plants, and we eat the animals. Whichever way it is, we need the light. And the early followers of Jesus just loved that image of Jesus being the light of the world too. And his light is reflected in us, and his light is reflected in you. And so we give you this, and uh, Dad might want to hold this. Or should we go to Mum, because Dad's got his hands full. Oh, Harrison's going to hold it. That's brilliant. And you can keep that. And my recommendation to, to all, all families is to, to put it somewhere safe. And we get times in life when things can be a bit dark. And that candle can be a reminder that God's light is present. And so maybe when things are a bit difficult, you can get that candle out and light it. And remember of the light that Jesus shines and the light he's placed in us. Harrison, you're doing very well at holding that. Shall we say together, uh, no, no, I'll say the next bit and then you say the bit afterwards. God has delivered us from the dominion of darkness and has given us a place with the saints in light. You have received the light of Jesus. Walk in this light all the days of your life. And we say together, shine as a light in the world to the glory of God the Father. Amen. Amen. And we also like to offer an opportunity. I'm, I'm going to pray in a moment, but we also like to offer an opportunity to the congregation here. If anybody would like to pray for Ethan, um, is there anybody who'd like to come up and pray? Uh, sometimes people do. Yeah. Um, um, thanks, Dave. You're going to set this one up. So, Maggie, yeah. Maggie, I'm going to bring this over to you so that so that they can they can hear you, and so can everybody else. I mean, God can hear you anyway. He doesn't need a microphone, but we don't all have God's hearing. Dad, whose name I don't know. <laughs> James. Um, we, have, we pray that you help the children grow in the faith and we pray that you help the parents lead them in the right way to go. We just ask that you pour your blessings out on them by the power of your Holy Spirit and let them have a sense of health and healing and happiness as they go from forward from this day. We just ask this in Jesus' precious name. Amen. Father God, we just um, thank you for this opportunity of sharing in Ethan's baptism. 
and uh, we just pray for a joyous day and the start of his journey with you, that you will bless him and his family. Amen. Lord, I want to thank you for this family, amazing family. Um, I thank you that the joy, for the joy that is in them. And I thank you for that joy that is in Ethan. Just that spark that you can see in as, as he's growing. And Lord, I just pray as he grows more and more, that he will grow more and more in you. Lord, I do know that he is going to be a blessing to other people. And I just pray that. I pray for the people he is going to bless through you. In Jesus' name. Amen. Lord, we just, we just thank you for this family. It's just been an absolute joy getting to know them um, over the last few weeks and months at Tiny Tots and, and here on a Sunday morning. And Lord, we just pray that you just have your hand upon them, upon the whole family. Put your protection around them, Lord. Whatever they go through, Lord, that they go through it together, but with you in the middle. Lord, with your hand upon each and every one of them. And Lord, as Harrison, as Ethan grow, Lord, that they will know your love for them. It's so important, Lord, that they will become mighty men for you. And we just pray for this afternoon, Lord, that they just have an amazing party afterwards and just lots of fun and lots of joy and cake. Very important. <laughs> In Jesus' name, amen. 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 Well, I was going to pray that they would both grow up to be strong, mighty men and that they would have an amazing party this afternoon. So I think you've covered that already. So I'm just going to say thank you, Lord, for this special day. And Lord, may, may there be many, many more special days to come. And may your strength be present in them through all of them. In Jesus' name, amen. 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 Harrison, do you want to be the guardian of the candle again? You can take that down with you. It's in a little box to keep it safe. Well done. Thank you, big brother. Thank you all. And... Um, should we give you all a round of applause as you head back to your seats? Thank you all. Well done, Harrison. That was good work. Well done, Ethan, too. We can continue with a song of worship. And at this point, um, Sharon, do you need any instructions as to how people leave to go to Kid Zone? Great. So there's, there's a praise and worship party out in the hall, which is just straight out that way. Just follow any kids who want to go out that way. And um, parents, if you, if you think your kids might not want to go out there on their own, uh, you could take them with you if you'd like. If you want to stay in here, you'd be very welcome to either way. We're going to continue with a song. Shall we stand and sing?
for his love for me. Through the sun sets free, oh, it's free me. I'm a child of God, yes, I am. Shit, laugh. At last he has ransomed me Oh, his grace loves me While I was a slave to sin Jesus died for me Yes, he died for me Through the sun sets free Oh, his reality I'm a child of God, yes I am. My father's house, in my father's house, there's a place for me. I'm a child of God, yes I am. I am chosen, I am chosen, not forsaken. I am who you say I am You are for me, not against me I am who you say I am I am chosen, not forsaken I am who you say I am You are for me, not against me I am who you say I am Yes, I am who you say I am. Who the sun sets free, oh, is free indeed. I'm a child of God, yes, I am. In my Father's house, there's a place for me. I'm a child of God, yes I am. Lord, thank you that each one of us is your precious child. Lord, each one of us is your precious creation. Lord, help us to know that for ourselves. And help us to know it for the people around us, next to us, behind us, in front of us. People across the other side of the world, Lord, may we know that each person is your precious child. And may that knowledge grow in us and strengthen us and strengthen our love for the people around us. We pray that for Ethan, Lord, that his love for the people around him will grow and strengthen. And that his knowledge of your love for him will strengthen, giving him confidence, giving him wisdom, giving him gentleness and patience. that he may be able to share goodness wherever he goes. Amen. Amen. Uh, Do please be seated. Um, One of our church team, Alison, is going to come and preach for, for us. Thank you. Right, I think that's on. Yep, brilliant, that's on. And 
so I'm just going to get my clicker out. It should be in here somewhere. Oh, there we go. Right. Good morning, everybody. Um, it's lovely to see you here and also those of you who are on Zoom and also anybody that's going to be watching this over catch up. You know, wherever you are, you're very, very welcome here. And it's a baptism today, and I find these occasions so joyful. It's so lovely just to be able to take part in welcoming Ethan at the start of his journey. So um, I wonder this morning what we would wish for Ethan. If we would say, right, we could just have a wish, and we would wish for him to be like this. Now, perhaps you'd wish for him to be healthy. That's a great thing to wish. Perhaps you'd wish for him to have lots of money. Um, perhaps you'd wish for him to have a great career. We've all got these wishes that we'd have, you know, I'd really like him to have all these things. Um, my wish for him is that he would have resilience throughout life. So all these other things are great, but the moment when so many difficult things are happening, having resilience to be able to handle them, I think, is a great thing. So I'm just going to unpack a little bit of them this morning. So, Ethan, what's in a name? Now, interestingly enough, when Chris prayed for Ethan, he prayed about strength. And that's what the name Ethan means, strong, firm. He's a strong, firm little boy. And it's also a biblical name. There's a chap in the Old Testament, the Bible, who wrote Psalm 89, and he's called Ethan the Ezraite. So Ethan, in the Bible, wrote Psalms. There's also um, Ethan the Ezraite, who may be the same Ethan Ezraite or a different Ethan Ezraite, who is recorded as being wise. So King Solomon was known for his wisdom, but he was the king. So I suppose you do have to say, well, he's wise, but he's obviously not as wise as the king. I suppose you have to kind of say that, really, don't you? So, but he was a really, really wise guy. Now, the Psalms are really good with dealing with life and all its pain and all its celebrations and saying it as it is in absolute honesty and doing a kind of mental reset after everything that's happened, resetting ourselves onto God. And that is so key um, in life. Um, I don't know if any of you are into sport. I rather suspect Ethan will be because he's a little boy, he's into everything. So I can quite see that he's gonna be a very sporty person. But there's a famous tennis coach called Jim Law, and he talks about mental reset, that when you're playing a game of tennis, you do something, and you might score a point, or you might not. If you score a point, you have a mental reset where you say, right, that was great, I scored the point, but I mustn't rest on my laurels, I've now got to go on and focus on winning the match. And if you don't score the point, then Jim says, you've also got to have a mental reset where you're saying, well, actually, I lost that one, but I'm not going to let it affect my focus on winning this match. And the Psalms are a bit like that, where things happen and we have a mental reset. And Ethan wrote one of those Psalms, and that's a great thing to do for resilience. Where anything happens, just have a mental reset. That was good. I'm going to celebrate but I'm going to move on. Or, that was really awful. But I'm going to have a mental celebrate. I'm going to have a mental reset. I'm going to moan for a bit, but then I'm going to move on. So, what we've done today with Ethan is we've done his baptism. And it's a great thing to do, but it's just the start of a journey. Chris spoke about using light as a symbolism. And the Bible talks about turning from darkness to turning to light. That it's that significant what's happened today, but it's just the start of a journey. Now, somebody else is getting christened today, baptised today, not here, but the actor and comedian Russell Brand is also getting baptised today. 
And he says, he's looking upon it as an opportunity to die and be reborn. An opportunity to leave the past behind and be reborn in Christ. Just as it says in the Bible that you live as an enlightened and an enlightened person, enlightened and awakened person. So that was his take on it, but again, it's something significant. So what have we done today? Well, one of the things we've done is we've marked Ethan. So he started his journey and he's kind of marked as being part of the team. So it's a bit like my husband's very into Wiccan Wanderers and I believe they did quite well yesterday. And he marked himself as being part of the team by wearing his colours yesterday. So what we did when we signed Ethan with the cross, it was a bit like marking him with the colours for the team. But the team isn't Wiccan Wanderers, the team is Jesus' team. And Jesus is kind of like Ethan's new boss. And what happens now in the journey is once Ethan has joined the team, he then has to go on and be instructed and to be marked. So the next thing that um, we hear about, so this is what Jesus said just before he ascended into heaven. He gave those instructions. But one of the things he said, he's going to be with us all the time. So the boss not just gives us instructions, but the boss is with us day after day after day, right to the end of the age. So good things happen, the boss is with us. Bad things happen, the boss is with us. So I'm just going to read a short passage from a letter that was written by Paul to the church at Corinth. And this was the early church. And he's kind of telling his story, his message, of what exactly it means to belong to that team. So he says, the message I, so that's Paul, because he's spoken, place before you that the Messiah, that's Jesus, died for our sins, which is what we remember at Easter, exactly as it was told in the scriptures in the Old Testament beforehand, that he was buried. So once Jesus has died, he was buried and he was raised from death on the third day, just as the scriptures said. So if you think about it, you think, okay, well, people die. Yeah, yeah, that's it. And they're buried, that's it. But this is something rather different. Because if you think about it, how could the boss be with us at the end of the age if he was still dead? Well, Paul says he's not. He's been raised to life. And you're thinking, my goodness, oh, this is, this is a bit strange, this is amazing. So how do we know, how do we know this is true? So then Paul goes on and says, what happened after that is Jesus showed himself to several of his friends. He showed himself to Peter, who was one of his closest friends, and then some more of his closest followers. And then... It wasn't just to one or two people, there were a group of 500 people all met together. And Jesus came and stood amongst them. And Paul says most of them are still alive when he was writing the passage, although a few have since died. So you could actually go and ask them at that time if you wanted to know more about it. So then after that, Jesus spent time with James and the rest that he commissioned represent him, and that he fully presented himself last to me, who's Paul, who's writing this. So that's kind of the evidence that Paul knows, not because other people have done this or seen this, but because he himself has actually seen Jesus who was dead and is alive and who can be with us. So what you might be saying, well, about a year ago, um, I took a family funeral. Um, and this person um, was actually also a very close friend. And uh, I said to his partner, 
who was organising the funeral. So what do you think about all this stuff about life and death? Just tell me honestly what you think. And she said, it's wonderful stuff, she said. I would just like to believe it's true. Wouldn't it be lovely if it's true? And I guess that's what a lot of people think. Wouldn't it be lovely if it was true? And it may be that Paul, hearing about Jesus, appearing to all these other people, thought, isn't it lovely? And then Jesus appeared to him. And so at the funeral, uh, when I took the service, um, I was able to say that. And I then said, yeah, it'd be lovely if it was true. This is how I know it's true. This is my story. Because what we've heard in the Bible passage is Paul telling his story what's happened to him. This is my story. And so I told them about my mother dying when I was quite young, followed by a few years later by my father dying. Now when my mother died, I didn't know Jesus. And it was really, really painful. I was 15 years old and it was very painful and I was totally lost. I didn't know where she was, what had happened to her. It wasn't great. But just after she died, I met people who knew Jesus. And they had this kind of inner peace, this inner glow about them. And I thought, you know, that's what I want. That no matter what happens in life, because bad things had happened to them, you'll have this resilience, you'll have this peace, you'll be able to go on. And so by the time my father had died, I'd actually experienced Jesus for myself. I'd taken Jesus on board. He was my boss. And I knew for myself in my Noah that Jesus would be with me. And it was very painful when my father died, but I had this sense of peace of being carried, this sense of resilience. And so that's what I told them about at the funeral that this was my story. And so, coming back as we close to my wish for Ethan today, that things will happen in life to Ethan. We hope many, many good things will happen and that'd be wonderful. But unfortunately, some difficult things will happen. And I would like Ethan to know that the boss is always with him and that the boss will be with him to the end of the age, and that will give him the resilience he needs to continue. I'm just going to spend uh, just a moment in quiet now, just giving you an opportunity just to uh, think through some of that. It may be you're thinking, oh, I'm not sure about this, or it may be thinking, yes, or you may be thinking, no, I don't agree with this at all. But whatever you're thinking, I'm just going to give you that space just to kind of process it. And if you're able to turn that into a prayer by talking to God, please do. Or if you just want to remain with your thoughts, that's great as well. Or just have your own wishes for Ethan. Either is great. And so, Father, thank you for this opportunity today, that today is a day of joy. Thank you for days of joy and so much to celebrate in your world. Amen. Alison, thank you. We're going to continue with a song.
Would you, would you grace Holy Lord? Okay. Yeah. Emily, we'll do, we'll do Great Are You, Lord, which is the first of the last ones. Do you know, it feels like one of those days when the microphone doesn't plug in quite right and the computer keeps turning itself off and it feels like one of those days, but I just feel like um, maybe there's a message that people need to hear mm. that actually that stuff isn't the important stuff. The important stuff is that God is with us. And whether you, whether you can like feel that or know it intellectually or not, God is with you. God is on your side. And so um, let's, let's sing this song just quite quietly and peacefully. It's a song about God giving light and giving love and being the light in the darkness. So we pour out our 
going to continue by sharing communion. And um, before we do, actually no, there's loads more people going to come back in a bit later on. I'll give some directions and instructions later when they're back in here. The words will appear on the screens and I'll say one bit and then everyone joins in with the other parts. The Lord is here. His spirit is with us. Lift up your hearts. We lift them to the Lord. Let us give thanks to the Lord our God. It is right to give thanks and praise. It is right to praise you, Father, Lord of all creation. In your love, you made us for yourself. And when we turned away, you did not reject us, but came to meet us in your Son. You embraced us as your children and welcomed us to sit and eat with you. In Christ, you shared our life that we might live in him and he in us. He opened his arms of love upon the cross and made for all the perfect sacrifice for sin. On the night he was betrayed, at supper with his friends, he took bread and he gave you thanks and he broke it. Saying, take, eat. This is my body which is given for you. Do this in remembrance of me. Father, we do this in remembrance of him. His body is the bread of life. And then at the end of supper, taking the cup of wine, he gave you thanks and said, drink this, all of you. This is my blood of the new covenant, which is shed for you for the forgiveness of sins. Do this in remembrance of me. Father, we do this in remembrance of him. His blood is shed for all. As we proclaim his death and celebrate his rising in glory, send your Holy Spirit that this bread and this wine may be to us the body and blood of your dear Son. As we eat and drink these holy gifts, make us one in Christ, our risen Lord. With your whole church throughout the world, we offer you this sacrifice of praise and lift our voice to join the eternal song of heaven. We say together, Holy, holy, holy is the Lord. Holy is the Lord God Almighty. Holy, holy, holy is the Lord. Holy is the Lord God Almighty, who was and is and is to come. Holy, holy, holy is the Lord. And as Jesus taught us, so we pray. Our Father in heaven, hallowed be your name. Your kingdom come, your will be done on earth as in heaven. Give us today our daily bread. Forgive us our sins as we forgive those who sin against us. Lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For the kingdom, the power and the glory are yours now and forever. Amen. Amen. Um, are the kids going to join us now? Or are they going to they going to filter in? Um, I, I believe God speaks to us, and um, sometimes come like really clearly, and sometimes less clearly. As we were preparing for the service, I felt God might be saying that there was somebody here, here who felt like all of this stuff is like two thousand years ago and irrelevant. That this is stuff that's just, you know, why, why do all this stuff for something that happened 2,000 years ago? And that God wanted to say to that person, well, when do you want me to do it? <laughs> like, do you mean that God had to do it at some point. God had to do this. He had to reveal how much he loves us at some moment. And if, if you wanted him to do it like a, three weeks ago or five years ago or just some fixed point in time 
Well, I think that's kind of selfish from our point of view. Great. Well, that's really good. They can stay as long as they want. That is exactly what we want to hear. Kids having fun. That's perfect. Anyway, that was just the thing that I just felt that if, um, if maybe you're thinking this is all something irrelevant, God had to pick a time and a place and a moment, and he picked a time when there was like a history was just becoming a thing that people understood about recording stories as they happened and people were starting to understand that you could write down things and share them widely and God picked that moment he picked a he picked a time and a place where there were people the Romans who were really good at wiping out any resistance and so they were excellent experts at killing people and that's what they did to Jesus and so it may be 2,000 years ago, but it could as well have been yesterday. Let's welcome everybody back in um, as they're coming, filtering in. I heard that you were having too much fun out there. You all wanted to stay. I feel, I feel slightly guilty for stopping that. Great. Brilliant. Perfect. I like your dinosaur jumper. That's really cool. I reckon I'm going to start explaining now. Um, so we, we've we've said the prayer before communion that sort of builds up to communion. Um, we are a Church of England church here, and the policy here is that if if you are a person who receives communion in your home church. Um, you're welcome to receive here. And also, you know, the, the kind of principle behind communion is, that, is the idea that it's for people who've been baptised. So if you are a, a baptised member of a church, um, you are welcome to receive at this table. But the way we do, the way we do communion is that uh, people come forward and there is two little stations at the front with the wafers and the wine. If you're not used to receiving communion, but something in the service has touched you and you want to respond to that in some way, um, if, you, if you want to receive communion, come forward with your hands up like that, and it'll be pretty obvious that you want something put in it. But if you'd like to come forward and receive a blessing, which could be something very simple, like may you receive the light of God, something like that, and the person doing the blessing will just say it as they say it. Um, just, just come on up forward with your hands down. and and. Uh, and the people distributing communion will just say a simple prayer of blessing over you. And I've seen God touch, that, touch people's lives that way in lots of different ways. So I'm going to pray again. I'm going to pray again, and then we're going to distribute communion. Lord, thank you that you were broken for us. For broken people, for people who need healing, for people who need strength, for people who need to know that they are loved. Thank you for your gift of yourself for us. And as we share bread and wine, may we remember how much you love us. And may we be filled with your life and your light. In Jesus' name. Amen. Amen. Would the, would the assistants like to come forward?
close with a final song. Um, do, you want, do you want to hear a crazy story about this song? Right? There was a lad, early 20s, 
who was having to go into hospital for a brain operation. It's a bit intense. He was having to go in for a brain operation, but it was one of those special brain operations where they had to keep the person conscious while they were doing the operation. Uh, maybe if you're squeamish, put your fingers in your ears for this bit. And, and they, they were operating on a certain part of the brain, and so they wanted the, the, they wanted the music center of the brain to be stimulated while they were doing the operation. And so they said to this lad, can you sing a song while you're, while, while you're, they can do this these days. They can, you can be conscious while they're operating on your brain. So they can, can you sing a song while we're operating on your brain? And he picked this song. He picked this song to sit, to like to sing. And the thing about that is that this song, it talks about the good times and it talks about the bad times and it talks about the beginning and it talks about the end of our times. And so he went into this really risky operation with these words on his lips. And so these are going to be the, the words that we finish off this, um, this service with. So if you'd like to, if you'd like to stand and we'll, we'll sing this. And if you don't know it, don't worry, there'll be a few people going to do, but not sing it loud enough. Worship your holy name. 
And Lord, I want to thank you for your presence with us in the good times, the bad times, the fun times, the hard times. Lord, thank you for the joy that we have seen this morning in these young kids. Lord, may there be a great celebration and party today. Lord, may we know just a glimpse of the great celebration and party that you have in store for all of us. Lord, thank you for your goodness and thank you for showing it to us. And Lord, as we go from here, may your rich blessing rest upon us. The blessing of God, Father, Son, and Holy Spirit be with us and those we love this day and forevermore. Amen. Amen. May you go in peace to love and serve the Lord. In the name of Christ. Amen. 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 Uh, but do please stick around. I think some people are sticking around for a party. And um, there's going to be tea and coffee out this way. Our prayer team will be up here at the front. If, if anything has moved you during the service and you'd like to... Uh, good, good move, for Anna. Thank you. Um, if anything's moved you and you want to talk to somebody about it, our prayer team will pray with you up at the front here. Have a great day. Have a great week. Bless you all. Thank you, band. Thank you, tech team. Goodbye, Zoomers. Thank you, refreshments team. Thank you, welcome team. Thank you, communion distribution people. Thank you, prayer team.